Warning, me time and murder is intended for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, here Dancing we go. Dancing around him, reciting <laughs> poetry. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh my God. That's crazy. No, why? <laughs> oh, well, big surprise. Oh God. <laughs> Dead on the bathroom <gasps> floor. Did it? It's okay. Oh. <laughs> Okay, Tres, what are you drinking? I am actually just drinking Barry's decaf tea today. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to buy more milk? vodka, actually. Yeah, I've just been on that sort of traditional tea train. I think it's a a, a wintery thing, isn't it? It's like you want. That. I was gonna say it's because you're, yeah, you're coming into the winter. I think that's. I just haven't mm-hmm. been reaching for the the fruity teas as much. Um, mm-hmm. What about you? What are you drinking? Well, I'm still on my fruity tea. Nice. I've got, um, what's it called? I've got Twining's Cranberry and Raspberry. Wait, is it raspberry? Cranberry and something. But uh, I have it ice as well. Oh, nice. I, have it, I let it sit and cool down. Yeah, very refreshing. For me time, I thought we could sort of like, I don't know, talk about, basically today I was f- feeling really down. Like whenever it's coming close to like my time of the month, like I get very... I get a lot of anxiety and I think a lot about previous stuff yeah. and I get like really stressed out and upset and so like one of the ways that I like to like pick myself up is like I write down my thoughts which Jaren told me to do okay. so I write down my thoughts mm-hmm. like why I feel bad mm-hmm. and then reasons why I shouldn't feel bad mm-hmm. and then like you know my plans for the future um and how great it's going to be when I you know achieve these plans mm-hmm. like like sort of like stop dwelling on the past and focus on the future yeah totally so i like to do stuff like that like he's like you should always if you're feeling overwhelmed just write it down like get it out of you therapist so I doing jaren no my hubs very wise but, um so then after that i was feeling a bit pumped and i was like that's it where i'm gonna have like like a really long shower like shave my legs and my pits and like <laughs> i know just like me time not a lazy shower me time basically. shower is definitely up. a big me time thing for me i don't care oh, dan yeah. makes fun of me of how long my showers are i don't care yeah you yeah. can afford the hot water it's just it's like <laughs> it's all good Trace, i sat down in the shower brought in a little chair and sat down to do to shave my legs <laughs> taking it easy yeah <laughs> Yeah, and then after that, I was I had my Olaplex. So I like did my nails, oh, nice. and then I put on some f- fake tan. Even though it's November, I was like, I want to look glowy. Oh yeah, no, I put it on all year round. Well, that's because I have to. Cause I look dead. Yeah, but but yeah. So like, what do you? What is like your me time? Like, what will pump you up? Yeah, definitely a long shower like that. Um, mm-hmm. I do shave my legs, even when I'm wearing trousers. I just will. I still do it. Um, uh huh. To be honest, like there's since I've been using the um the IPL, that's another me time. Oh, the la- the laser. Yeah, it, yeah. It was not, I don't know, I I call it laser hair removal. It's technically not because it's not a laser. Mm-hmm. It's just like light. Mm-hmm. But um, uh-huh. a lot of people, yeah. Um, since I've been using that, there, to be honest, there's not really much to shave. But mm-hmm. um, I still you know what it is. It's just a habit. And even if I'm putting yeah. on trousers and no one is going to see, see my legs and there's very little hair mm-hmm. left on them now anyway, I still shave my legs, mm-hmm. put on Dan <laughs> and then put my trousers on. <laughs> no, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the definition of madness, really. It's just so, but it's just for me. I like to look yeah. at my nice, healthy legs, you know. Well, not real, <laughs> smelling, not real health. Smelling like biscuits. <laughs> yeah. So I'll do, yeah, I'll do the tan is definitely big. And even just doing the the IPL hair removal is a me time thing for me because I'll put on mm-hmm. a TV show, um, mm-hmm. Beverly Hill Housewives, something, real, the real Gosh. Housewives, yeah, something like that. Just pure <laughs> trash and just do the laser and it does take a while. So I think mm-hmm. it's, it's anything that takes a, a good length of time I think is good because mm-hmm. you kind of have to just stick with it like really focus on yourself yeah anything like that mm-hmm. that takes a bit of time or like doing my nails I don't mm-hmm. really do this as often 
but I have mm-hmm. the at home gel kit where you put it under the UV and you know that takes, oh do you I do yeah it takes time you know mm-hmm. but I definitely think going to the the salon would be even better me time because you're getting like literally pampered by somebody else right. doing your nails but try to save the moolah as well so <laughs> it's, it's, it's all a balance I but know, yeah right? that that's been my little routines I'm actually thinking of um of purchasing the Olaplex myself I know how I have brunette and I know it's like a blonde thing but it's I, definitely our thing yeah it's like a big blo- blonde thing but do you know what I think my the quality of my hair could be better so I might mm-hmm. I might start doing it as well well I'm starting to notice a bit of a difference um my hair's definitely like thicker or stronger or something okay I don't know. Like, I've been good. using it better now. The only thing is, is that you're meant to use it like two or three times a week. Oh, wow. And it's just like, it's quite, it's expensive for a yeah. start. And then it's like, well, I don't have time to wet my hair and then leave it in for half an hour. And I've heard shower. that. You have to get out yeah. of the shower and wait and then get back in. Yeah. That did make me think, hmm. So I'm only finding that I'm able to do it once a week. So I just leave it till today. Like Sunday is like chore day, tidy day, shower day. Yeah, same. Day. I, I only have time yeah. to do stuff like that at the weekend. Yeah, same. Oh yeah, so you're thinking of getting the yeah. Olaplex? Yeah, I th- you can get 10% off on, do you ever shop on Feel Unique? No. It's a UK site. I've heard of it. Mm, heard it's of very it. good. You, you get 10% off two of your favourite brands. But yeah, I'll keep you updated. We'll see. I mean, that's a UK site, so I would have to go collect that up north. But I am willing to drive for these things. These are... (laughs) uh, There is a pile of beauty products on my bed at home. Today we have a very special episode request from a Mrs. Vera McGuinness. She has been sending me a few things actually recently. Has she? Yeah, sorry, I haven't sent them on to you yet, but oh. she has been sending me. Yeah, I think she like keeps her eyes peeled. I know, she's always looking out for us, but she's always like, she's interested in ghost spooky stuff. Oh, yeah. More than murder stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's cool too. Uh, after Mummy's request, we are going to do a little spooky episode. Fear McGuinness ghost story. Ireland has a rich culture of supernatural fer- fernum- phenomenon, such as ghost hauntings and banshee whales, to fairy persecutions, which we covered, and Virgin Mary apparitions. <laughs> I can't believe you're including that in all of those. <laughs> okay, okay I, t- <laughs> Harsh. I took a lot of this from RTE. Oh, Brainstorm. did you? Sorry, this is not new. Do you know what this yeah. reminds me of? I was in Portugal recently, uh-huh. uh, in Lisbon, and um, they were selling a lot of, I I actually like these, you know, the little mini rosary beads. I always thought they were cute, like little bracelets. I know that's not what they're supposed to be. <laughs> but they were selling these little mini bracelets, and they were uh-huh. for Fatima. And Dan. I thought Fatima was in Italy. I'm pretty sure it's Portugal, is it not? Is it? Oh well, oh, why shit. were they selling them in in Lisbon? Zeka, we'll clear this up right now. Where? Yes, it is in Portugal. Is, okay, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I mean, they were selling them in Lisbon. Okay. okay. Um, and then Dan was like, "What's Lady Fatima? What is what is it?" He had a clue. He would never heard really? of it. Yeah, never heard of it. He knows the Irish ones, the classics, the knock. What Lady is she knock called? And... Is she a oh, Lady of Knock? I was going to call yeah. her Mary of Knock. It was hilarious then. I was in Dublin with Zara, and Zara was like, <laughs> it was like, um, um, it wasn't just Lady of Knock, it was John the Baptist was also beside her, and Joseph. That's right. Do you know? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. God, you're right, Zara. And, yeah. um, and then I was saying, we used to go to those like Christian knock youth festivals and like oh, God, we used to sleep we so in the tent. Cool. So and, cool. <laughs> and um and I and, and I was just realizing I don't actually know the story of knock. Wait, oh wait, let me guess. Right. Didn't Mary appear But to who? To some little girl. Okay. And there was something about that's why they drink the water. Or there is something about the water f- there, yeah. And somebody, I think the kid was blind or something, <gasps> and they put the water on her eyes, and then she could see. 
Was Wait it something minute. like that? But anyway. So that was in the article that Mummy sent me. And I was like, was it? Okay. I totally forgot about the Lady of Knock thing until yeah. it was in this article. And yeah. I was like, oh gosh, yes, that is kind of supernatural as I well. I they're just. It? I know that I would never group them all together, but I guess, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right. But yeah, so in Ireland, we're really into the supernatural, uh, as well as there's actually quite a few Irish ho- horror horror authors. Mm-hmm. Bram Stoker, who wrote Dracula, is from Ireland. Oscar Wilde, who wrote The Picture of Dorian Gray. Yeah, he went to... He Petora. went to Enniskill and Petora. Yes, mm-hmm. where we're from. What else? He wrote something else. It was really dark. Um, I, think all of this I don't know, but didn't dark. he write The Importance of Being Earnest? Yeah, that's Mummy's Which favorite. is, like, unbelievably good. If you haven't watched it, watch it. <laughs> Reese Witherspoon. What's... Do I have to say anything more? Rupert Everett. But he did the one with the Mrs. Havisham. What was that one? Oh, did he write that one? Um, yeah. It did. No, the... wait, no, that was Charles Dickens. Oh, yeah, no, you're right, that's Dickens. Oh, sorry. Oh, do you remember that adaption, the BBC? Yes, it and was And Pip was really hot. <laughs> <laughs> he was! <laughs> oh, the BBC, they know what they're doing. They do, um, they do, they do. J. Sheridan Le Fanu. I, I don't know the side. Um, yeah, I don't know. It sounds like French. I know, right? Apparently he wrote... Carmilla, which is a lady vampire book. I looked up other horror Irish authors. There's actually like quite a few. I was like, gosh, we are twisted. Yeah, we do like yeah. dark things. We do, don't we? Little we ghost do. stories and do. stuff. Yeah. You can't, I don't think there's a town in Ireland that doesn't have a haunted house. Yeah, there's a lot of like, or a castle or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Mm-hmm. Ireland is known for its Ireland is known for its legends and steeped in fictional fantasies and horrors. However, the same cannot always cannot always be said for the non-fiction scientific side of paranormal, known as psychical research or parapsychology. It seems as though Ireland does not participate in this side of the horror coin. Although Irish parapsychology isn't spoken about, it did happen. Okay. In Dublin, during the late 19th century, there were dozens of intellectuals engaged in psychical research, same as the re- <clears throat> same as the rest of the world at this time. They were investigating haunted houses, testing psychics, photographing spirits, and even communicating with the dead. Ooh. The most famous in Ireland at this time was Sir William Fletcher Barrett. He was not actually Irish, he was an English physicist who who came to Dublin in the 1870s to teach and advance his career in physics. Sir Barrett was like one of the many professional scientists at the time who were also interested in psychical research. Sir Barrett would spend his weekdays lecturing Dublin undergrads on x-rays and electromagnetism and then spend his weekends investigating the supernatural and participating in seances. Would you ever go to a seance? Would I ever go to a seance? It would I go to one where they were taking it seriously? Yeah. Like Maybe s- not. Yeah. What like one where it's just for a bit of crack? Probably, yeah. Because I think if I went to the serious one, I'd offend people because I'd be giggling and shit. <laughs> but you know what I mean? And if someone is like genuinely wants to communicate with a loved one, I mean, that would just be so inappropriate. So That's I would true, need yeah. to be with like-minded people who are kind of laughing at it but also slightly open to it at the same time you know that balance of yeah. you're you're yeah. having a bit of fun but I, I mean I can't rule it out I don't think anyone can well I science know. maybe I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I don't know I don't know I don't know how I feel about it how do you feel about it I've never been invited to one where uh, like I don't know that they happen? go on a lot really <laughs> <laughs> like I don't I yeah. don't think if I was in one I wouldn't believe it I wouldn't believe it was happening Mm. Like all these, it's always fucking knocks and stuff. It's I know like, they're very easy to do. Very easy to mimic. It would take a lot to convince me as well. I mean, any time I do, you know, like a ghost tour or whatever, like I never get scared, like mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. scared. You know, I never, mm-hmm. I've never seen anything with my own eyes. We've talked about this before, apart from that man in the cape that I thought was chasing me home. 
We talked about that on an episode. That's the only thing I've ever experienced. Your dream? And the woman on the road, but I think she was a reflection of the water and I just needed glasses, the water on the road. <laughs> but you I, tell me about the woman in the water? I was in a car and it was, I think it was just, you know when there's a bit of water on the road and like the moonlight reflects on it and it just looked like a shape of a person. Oh. And then I just needed glasses, I think, yeah. Oh, and you're probably tired as well. If it's, if it's it was so quite late at night, yeah. It was after yeah. the cinema and I think my eyes were just a bit fucked. I probably needed glasses for the cinema as well and didn't realise it. And straining my eyes all night to look at the screen and, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what a lot of things are. People just need glasses, really. <laughs> when they think they've seen something, you know. Yeah. Your eyes play tricks on you. Sir Barrett became a member of the Royal Irish Academy, which is like a big group of scientists who meet up. While here, he built up many connections, one of which was Thomas Plunkett, a geologist. Plunkett was given a grant to research the limestone caves in County Fermanagh. No way. Yeah. Oh my God, what's in the limestone caves? This is why Mummy wanted us to. Oh my God. No, it, it's not. Shh. You're thinking of The Descent, aren't you? No! <laughs> oh god, mommy should never watch that movie. She's seen it! Oh, I she... we watched it with her! Did, did the three no, of us not watch it? No, hardly. I don't think so. No, she loves that movie, Tres. Stop it. That's my you most know, she... hated movie. No, but you love to hate it. <sighs> oh god, it's the scariest movie I've ever seen. It's so good. Um, yeah. So our mum worked in the caves, just in case people are wondering. That's right, she worked in the caves. It is a scary place to work. Imagine being down there on your own. Yeah, but mummy's such a nerd. Every time she goes there, she's right up at the front of the queue, asking all the questions that oh, she knows the answers she to. She's like, <laughs> she's like pointing at like, like this, this rock is it. called this, and this rock is this, and you can't touch it. And stop There's one called like the porridge or something. That's it, right. The, the, the por- is it the porridge? Pot I don't know. Or? There's one that looks like porridge or something. I don't know. It's all gross to me, but she loves it. Oh, she loves it. What a nerd. Uh, we have a stalactite in our garage. In our, oh my gosh. It? It's not our garage. It belongs to the apartment block. But like, there's a stalactite and a stalagmite. <laughs> and it's like right beside our car. And I'm just like, what? Like, this is gross. There's something, mm. something dripping that from the bananas. building. That's it's fantastic. Rotten. Can eh? you want me to go look at it? She could check it out. I don't know what's going on. They don't do anything about it. They just leave it. And I'm like, that's going to keep growing. I'm like, they're... Filming it, putting Gross. it on, making a TikTok. Should do a time lapse. That'd be cool. Yeah. Anyway. 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 So the way up to Fermanagh. Uh, so Barrett joined Plunkett on the trip. After a long day of studying rocks, the pair heard tell of a little haunted farmhouse. Apparently, this house was experiencing loud rapping and scratching sounds that could be heard throughout the night. Then, objects started to move. Items would be found outside the farmhouse, especially after a night of continuous banging and rapping noises. So, they thought they may as well check it out. And off they set in their horse and buggy to Derrigonley. Shut up. I know, went to Derrigonley. I thought I'd hear Derrigonley in a story. All right. I know, in, in our, one of our episodes. Yeah, that's where our granny lived. It is like the smallest town in the world. Yeah. I drove through it one time and I was like, oh, and it's gone. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's so small. Uh, uh, farmhouses around the 19th century in Ireland typically consisted of a kitchen slash living room area. Like, it's very open. Mm-hmm. One big room. Yeah. yeah. Then, usually off to the side, like behind where the fire would be, would be two bedrooms. One would be usually for the kids and one for the parents. Okay. In the middle of the big room is a fire that burns turf or wood. This acts as heat, light, and a stove. It is also a good way for keeping things so you have it constantly on in the middle of the of the house. Uh-huh. Of course, there was no electricity, and if you could afford it, there were oil lamps. In the Derrigonley farmhouse lived a poor Methodist family. A widower, his four daughters, and one son. The poltergeist activity was happening around the oldest 20-year-old daughter, Maggie. Maggie reported hearing strange, ghostly, unexplainable noises. But recently, she said, the poltergeist had become 
physical. The noises had been becoming louder and louder, and with rappings on the wall, the spirit started dropping stones outside the cottage. With some guy who <laughs> fancied her. Throwing <laughs> pebbles at the window. Come outside. I don't know. Then things inside the house started moving and going missing. And just the other day, the spirit had even touched Maggie. Oh, Lord. Okay, that's worrying. The father said to Barrett and Plunkett that they were all at their wits' end. Lamps and candles proved impossible to keep in the cottage, and they were always found outside in the morning. What? I know. So strange, right? So strange. Do they have a sleepwalker, perhaps? Uh, you know? Maybe, I suppose. <gasps> Someone sleepwalking in the night, lifting things up, putting them outside. I've seen people do <laughs> stuff like that before. I have. I've seen people do that. Have you seen that girl? Selena Spooky. The one who records herself sleepwalking. In her onesie. Yes. Selena oh Spooky. God. I just told Zara about this girl like Hilarious. a couple of weeks ago. She is, oh. I love her so much. Her Instagram <gasps> is hilarious. And she like always like does like little farts and like laughs yeah. and like and then she like runs away. She's like I love oh. her so much. She's so funny. <laughs> yeah, she is the best. She's such a good. Um, I, I she just she can laugh at herself. Yeah, I like her a lot. Uh, anyway, so but yeah, you, you, you could be something like that. Someone you know lifting things and moving them around in their sleep, yeah, and they this, don't. Yeah, yeah and would they, they have known about sleepwalking back then? Maybe I don't know. I don't might know. Have, yeah. Like the thing is, if there was sleepwalking and if they seen it, they probably thought that they were possessed. I know, probably. You know? Yeah, they were suspicious of things like that. Weren't yeah. they just very simple things like that? Yeah. Um. The father went on. We need your help, please. You have to help us. This is happening nearly every night now. This is a diabolical hullabaloo. Oh my god! <laughs> I love when people spoke like that. Hullabaloo. <laughs> so cute. Oh, so Barrett and Plunkett stayed the night to do their own investigation. After dinner, the younger children went to bed. The son, the father, Plunkett and Barrett and Maggie stayed up to investigate an experiment. Maggie laid flat, fully clothed, on top of the bed. So I'd like arm... to think she was fully clothed. No, thank God. <laughs> Why do we oh. need that detail? This story is worrying. When you said she was touched, I don't know what that. I did not get. I did not get good vibes from that. That's all it said in the article. I have no idea. This is very worrying. Now she's lying down on the bed with these people around her. I don't know. Okay. I know. Was she like touched on the arm, or was she touched somewhere else? Very vague. What age is she? She's about twenty. Okay. So <clears throat> she's laying on the bed fully clothed with her arms and legs like out of, they're not under the blankets uh-huh. so that they could be seen at all times. Uh-huh. The men left the bedroom door wide open so that they could see her and watch from the kitchen. Okay. The men, the men then settled down around the kitchen fire and waited. Eventually, faint rapping sounds could be heard. These got louder <laughs> and louder. It was now pattering raps, scratching, and other indeterminate sounds. So rats? That's what I thought. I was yeah. like, I, I hate to have rats. Yeah. The sounds were coming from the walls, the ceilings, and other parts of the bedroom. Okay, that's weird. Lots of rats. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of weird the way they're like sitting in the other room. I think I would sit in the bedroom with her. I know, it's like they're like rubbernecking, like just leaving. Maybe back they felt like it's in. inappropriate to sit in a room with a woman I don't, in her bedroom, I don't know, but. I, I'm not too sure. It was weird back Maybe then. that's why they like cleared up the fact that like she had her clothes on for some. I don't know. I think they're paranoid about it. I don't know. Barrett told the boy and the father to stay at the kitchen table and he asked Mr. Plunkett to go outside around and look for any pranksters. Upon Barrett entering the room with an oil lamp, the noises had stopped. Oh. From what he could see, Maggie was not deceiving him. Then, suddenly, out of nowhere, a pebble dropped and landed on the bed beside Maggie, with no matter of explanation. Okay, that is very weird. In the article Barrett later published on the topic, he wrote, 
I mentally ask for a certain number of knocks. They were slowly but correctly given. Hmm. I think it's weird that he said it mentally. That like, why would why would you assume that a ghost can read, can your, read mind? your mind? That's, it could be just a coincidence. I wonder what the I'd love to know what the number of knocks was because if it was like three or four, uh huh, that's easy. But if it was like thirteen, you know, like a big number, yeah, that's it's less a likely. Small one. Yeah. yeah. The next day, Barrett wanted to stay on and investigate more, so he telegraphed Dublin for an acute and careful observer to join him in the investigations. So, up came the Reverend Maxwell Close. What is your opinion on, re- on like, priest scientists? Quote-unquote scientists. Sounds like an oxymoron. Right, doesn't it? Reverend. Reverend. Sounds That's like a Protestant, Protestant priest. Protestant, yeah. Yeah. Um... I when I hear that I think he's bored. That's what I hear. I feel like he, he yeah, pretty much. I don't know. It's like well, I guess the way they thought of science back then, but then there is still like priests and reverends and holy people today who claim to have say in science literature. Yeah, but they're also bored. <laughs> they just wanna. Do you know what I mean? They say the same thing over and over again. They've only got the one book to go to, you know. That's true. That's like, true. you'd be... And I think they want to show, I don't know, just have a bit of purpose and kind of have a bit of... hmm Yeah. I don't know, exert their power a little bit more, I guess. Even though they've had plenty of it and too much of it, really. But Reverend Close was a well-established and well con- well-connected intellectual in Dublin at the time. So, the men got to work. Again, that night, Sir Barrett and now Reverend Close stayed up waiting for the poltergeist activity. Barrett asked many questions this time, and the answers always being given by a number of raps. Every time the correct number was given, Reverend Close prayed with the family and read some passages from the Bible. He then came up with the idea, so they left a Bible open with its pages weighted down by stones in the room that Maggie and her sisters occupied. When they got up the next morning, the experiment was to no avail, as the stones were removed and the pages of the Bible were found ripped out. Anyone could have done that. I know, right? For God's sake. The Derogani case has been cited as one of the first modern poltergeist investigations. By what year is this? Eighteen... 70. Okay. Is that modern? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it is unclear what happened to the Methodist family afterwards, although Maggie did report that the disturbances continued for months. I thought you were going to say it followed her for her entire life. That's like the <laughs> ending of like every haunted house movie. Can't kill the spirit or the entity. So this, yeah. this went on for months, but that means it stopped. Yes, or so, else she got bored of pretending to be haunted. You think she was... Mm, what's yeah. her goal? Attention. Do you really want attention from a load of, like, priests? Not really. Yes. You, you, well, like, <laughs> you just say yes. 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 <laughs> That's the only people I want attention from. I mean, I don't... <laughs> get the goal here other than every single person is just bored mm-hmm. every single one of them oh yeah well like i'm sure as well though with these stories and you've got these rich affluent professors and reverends coming up they're probably like throwing the family a few bob mm. they're looking like, for something to confirm what they yeah, yeah. yeah. and then like as well like they can sell the story and stuff, right? Yeah. No? Well, the, it was a lot of like, hoaxes went on for money. Yeah. And they're all, like, wanting to, as I said, like, just confirm everything because it's all in their best interest. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's, that's so true. interesting that that happened in Derek Gonley. Derek Gonley. So, thank you, Mummy, for your... <laughs> yes, thank you. And I wonder where the house is. Oh, I wonder. Because that would be really easy to visit. It could be knocked down, though. Because you know what I thought it was? Whenever Mummy sent this to me, I thought it was the story of the Cunyan ghost. Okay, I don't... Do I know that? Um, it's the most famous one in Fermanagh, is the okay. Cunyan ghost. Okay. 
and it's also got something to do with a priest and and a kettle. Did somebody, <laughs> st- <laughs> sorry, somebody... it's like a bad joke. A priest yeah. and a kettle, <laughs> <laughs> but what? it was like something like like a priest murdered a family Stop in this cottage it. or something. Stop it! What well, I know, yeah. I've never heard this. Did you not hear a the, murderous you priest? Yeah. That's so juicy. I've never heard that. And then somebody stole a kettle from the crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what did they do with it? What and did they apparently, do? Apparently they went to America and the spirits followed them all the way to America. And then the only way for this person to get rid of the spirits was to return the kettle this to the Cunion house. So... And apparently the kettle is still there. <gasps> Yeah. I want to go see the Kunian kettle. Oh my god. Oh, it's something oh, like that. That's okay. a really, It's one of the most famous ones in Fermanagh. The Kunian. Okay. And I love the word Kunian. It's so fun. So do I. <laughs> very good. Very good. Thank you, Mommy. Yeah, that was good. Please like us and follow us and do all of the Instagram and the Facebook and stuff like that. Um, give us a review and you can mention there that you would like us to cover a British or an Irish case. We mostly cover crime, but I wouldn't say no to a spooky one. I like a good ghost story, especially this time of year. I know Halloween has passed, but I'm yeah. still about the spooky things. Yeah, this no, time again, it's okay. Also, I'd love to know if people have any theories apart from rats, because I feel like that's so <laughs> unimaginative, but my brain isn't giving me anything else right now. I also thought rats. I was just like, you've got rats. There's rats yeah. Rats. Or like a pigeon nesting in the, I don't know. Or like, you, uh, you would have heard the cooing. And also That's I think true. the scratching sounds like rats. It does. I know. Yeah. It just feels like a cop out though. I'd love to know some theories of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't think it's pranksters because those would have to be some committed pranksters to go yeah, every to night. All the time. Yeah. yeah, no. Or it could be her herself. We covered a case like that before. Was it the scratching fanny? Yeah. <laughs> Where she was doing the tapping, wasn't she? It was her the whole time. She had that, like, it she had, like a, pe- she had like a rock or something yeah, in her pocket and she could, was scratching mm-hmm. off the off the wall. I think a lot of the time it was the person. Yeah. Same. I've heard a lot of cases like that. Yeah. Um, Do you know that famous story where the woman was saying that she was given birth to to yes. rabbits oh it's so gross what was and she was just... supposed to be giving birth to rabbits like dead rabbits <laughs> so, but yeah, really... was... who covered that what podcast i think it was it um that's why we drink probably yeah um and she was just shoving rabbits up her funny people well, will do weird stuff uh, for attention Tris. yeah i know i know <laughs> yeah that case was mental i couldn't believe that was that really happened but then a lot of people believed it they did and then doctors doctors quote unquote went in and like looked up her fanny and they were like yes definitely a rabbit up there yeah people back in the day doing weird things anyway so we'll see you in the next one guys slana walia bye bye me time and murder would like to thank and acknowledge our sources that make this podcast possible references can be found on our instagram page 